Welcome to Sex at 11. I'm Rebecca Rosenblatt, Certified Relationship and Sexuality Therapist and your host, here to answer your also intimate questions about love and lust. So give us a shout at 1-800-968-7836. That's 1-800-968-7836, toll free, and let's chat. But don't wait too long if you want to make sure that we can get to you. Now we're going to welcome Susan McCord all the way from Vancouver via phone to discuss the challenges of dating and relationships. Susan is multi-talented. She's the creator, host, and writer of an online dating, relationship, and lifestyle talk show. She's uploaded over 200 videos to YouTube. She writes regular advice columns. And tonight, she's all ours. Hi, Susan. We've enjoyed so many of your Beaver Talk clips, so it's truly delightful to have this chance to speak with you in person. Well, what an introduction I just got. Hey, Hello, you deserve it. Rebecca. How are you? Very excited to be talking with you, oh, finally. What are some of the challenges that men and women face during dating these days? Well, I think the biggest problem is that we're sort of stuck in the, pardon the expression, but the guinea pig stage of learning how mm -hmm. to appreciate the, this new gender attitude, because things have changed a lot. And um, we're hiding behind technology a lot with our computers and smartphones, and we're all so busy because everybody's got careers nowadays. And mm -hmm. so what's happened is that we've forgotten how to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, both the sexes have actually taken on a bit of a defensive attitude when it comes to meeting a potential date. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a, a protective coding that prevents us all from getting hurt, especially mm -hmm. the over 30 demographic. Mm -hmm. Right? We have to bring courtship back uh, to have human content, or sorry, contact, so that the pheromones, you know, we've got to have those mm -hmm. pheromones out there. They have a chance to circulate and allow a connection to transpire naturally. Mm -hmm. we're, we're hiding a lot behind computers, and we're afraid to sort of get out there and, and get rejected. You are so right, and, and people do do that. And when we rely on words, I mean, Dr. Marabian said only 7% of impression formation comes from words. The rest is looking at this person, their tone of voice and, uh, you know, their body language, and we do wave of that and uh, just hide behind those gadgets, like you said, and the pheromones are not working, all the flirtatious little uh, subtle and not-so-subtle clues are going back and forth. So you are so right. Do you feel, well, sorry? No, well, what's happened, I think, is we've, both sexes have stereotyped each other. Mm -hmm. um, the, the one thing that I get the most with, with people who write um, for advice, or just even people I meet on a daily basis and mm -hmm. ask me questions about relationships, is, is the fact that men, um, men think that women are really materialistic or they're, they're, they're too picky with what they want. And the women think the men are all players and the only thing they want is sex. Mm -hmm. So what's happened is you're doomed the minute you even go out because mm -hmm. everybody has got this stereotypical attitude about each other. And we have to mm -hmm. let go of that. We can't play into that all the time. We have to look at each person individually, mm -hmm. watch the body language. If you think someone's materialistic when you're out somewhere, watch how they behave around other people, around mm -hmm. the server, if you're at a restaurant. If they're smiling and they're friendly, they're not that type that you've already put in your head that they could be. Susan, those are really brilliant uh, tips because you're right, we uh, stereotype people and then once we have a story, we look for clues that fit the story and we sort of dismiss the rest. So looking at how they behave with others is really, really crucial. Uh, do you feel that there are uh, all these gender differences, part of it is the stereotypes we have, but some of the other gender differences too in how we communicate, how we express ourselves, do you think they contribute to the difficulties? Well, definitely. You're, to you're totally correct about that. What Women want men to be masculine, mm -hmm. uh, but nowadays we can do a lot ourselves. Like, I mean, I even have my own power drill, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of these kind of things. That sounds that, sexy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's really sexy, especially with, like, when I wear the cutoffs, you know? But the thing is, what happens is, is that women, we have both changed. So I'm not going to sit there and harp about women, but women have to allow men to be men. As much as we have progressed, and we've got the careers going, and we're, we're just as strong in a lot of ways as men are, men still want to feel like they're masculine, they're needed, that mm -hmm. um, we have to ask them once in a while to, to help us to do things. I know that sounds really basic, but that's all they really, truly want. Mm -hmm. And the men have to allow women to be women. We mm -hmm. have to be allowed to be emotional. Like, men are allowed to have their testosterone. We need to be able to have our estrogen. Mm -hmm. We have to just accept that we have these differences why do we want to be the same? Mm -hmm. Do you want to look at your, another partner just like you? 
every day that you wake up? Do you not want the differences of what they bring to your life? You know, you are so right because we're a team. And if you were hiring somebody, you're not going to hire everybody with the same skill set. You can hire people with different skill sets. So you are so right. We bring different things. And evolutionary speaking, there is a bit of a lag. So we should allow our partners to do what they've been programmed to do. So very good points. Now, what has happened to courtship and face-to-face -face contact? Now, you did mention something very important. You opened up with how, uh, you know, we hide behind this uh, behind these little gizmos, our smartphones and computer and stuff. Do you think that that has uh, taken a bigger impact with respect to how we're relating to each other? Absolutely. Because what's happened is, you know, gone are the days of marrying your high school sweetheart, you know, till mm -hmm. death do you part. And, you know, the apron June Cleaver days are no longer. Mm -hmm. We're not sitting at home being, you know, the person that takes care of the house and that's all we do. So what's happened is, as I said earlier, we're in this guinea pig transition stage of learning how to deal with each other because we're a lot more equal now, both sexes. Both of us are working. Both of us are, are parents. And, and when we're both working nine to five jobs, it's not just one person's job to come home and do mm -hmm. this anymore. So what we have to do is we have to learn how to talk to each other. We learn, have to learn how to communicate. And when we go out into the world, we have to just, we can't sit there and hide behind a, a computer and sabotage mm -hmm. every person that comes our way. I mm -hmm. think we get afraid because we're so used to being behind that computer that when we actually talk to somebody face-to-face, -face, it scares the crap out of us. It does. And, you know, the dynamic is very different. When you're behind the safety of the computer, you open up, and all of a sudden you see this person, you've told them everything about maybe about your fantasies and your desires, and then you can't even say hello and you're feeling awkward. So lots of very valid points that you've made. Now, before you go, can you uh, quickly tell us what can men and women do to connect again? What's your one piece of advice? Well, first of all, I really, really strongly suggest that if you are a shy type of person and you're nervous, maybe you've been hurt a lot, and the biggest thing that people are not connecting is fear. They've had rejection. We look at the fact nowadays that people are single at all ages, and that's where I was going on my long-winded thing about that we're not married for, forever anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so people are single at 50, 60, you mm -hmm. know, all over the age map. So we have to learn how when we walk down the street, Make eye contact, smile at somebody. Men mm. are afraid because what happens if they do say something, there's harassment charges for certain things. And, mm. and, and granted, you know, some of that's, you know, legitimate. But for the most part, just smiling at each other, ignoring each other down the street is, is huge. And mm -hmm. we're not doing that. We, we don't make eye contact as much anymore. When you go out to an environment. It doesn't have to be a bar. It can be a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge the person next to you in the lineup. Absolutely. Say thank you to somebody. And Say smile and flirt the lost art to bring it back. And of course, you have tons of wonderful, wonderful uh, video clips that teach you lots of those aspects. So how can <laughs> people find you on the web? Well, my, my, the one they can find me the most on, if they want to just go directly to the videos, is my YouTube channel with, or my email, which is Susan McCord 9 at gmail.com. Perfect. It, yeah. Thank so. you so much, Susan, and how truly delightful. And I know that uh, everyone knows your URLs by now, anyways. So I'm sure that you'll hear from our audience. Thank you again. Have a really nice night. You too. And thanks for all your wonderful promoting. And I love to promote you. You're amazing. Oh, likewise. You're wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me on tonight. You're welcome. Okay. Bye bye.